Good morning, and thank you all for holding. Your lines have been placed on a listen-only mode until the question and answer portion, and I would like to remind all parties the call is now being recorded. If you have any objections, please disconnect at this time. And I would now like to turn the call over to Deborah Rivera. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Census Academy webinar series webinar, where today we will be learning about women-owned businesses. Um, I will be your host for today. My name is Deborah Rivera, and I am a training specialist for the U.S. Census Bureau. So thank you all for joining us. Joining me today is my colleague, Kim Davis, um, and with, uh, along with her, we'll be providing technical support to our speaker and sending you some helpful information via the chat. And the chat can be located towards the right-hand side of your WebEx event screen. And then just a few housekeeping items before we get started here. As always, we are recording this webinar, and along with the training materials associated with it, we will be posting that recording to our Census Academy website as a free learning resource so you can always refer back to it. Um, the live question and answer session will take place at the end of the presentation. And um, just to, to mention, uh, the posting usually takes us about uh, between three and five business days. So the recording should be up by the end of next week, hopefully. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker for today, Linda Lee. And Linda Lee is a statistician at the U.S. Census Bureau serving in the Data User and Trade Outreach Program for the Economic Management Division. She has experience with many economic programs to include both private and public sectors of the economy. Her current capacity as a liaison between stakeholders and subject matter experts includes managing economic program data requests and assisting data users from novice to expert levels with finding and using appropriate statistics and tools. She coordinates the efforts of staff in producing webinars and social media releases of economic data for multiple platforms, my apologies. And her experience in quarterly and annual programs is instrumental to her collaboration with, with external stakeholders to conduct training on this Bureau's economic programs. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you, Deborah. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your interest in today's webinar on women-owned businesses. My name is Linda Lee, and I will be your presenter. Today's webinar is recorded and will be posted on our site, census.gov, found under Census Academy. If you've never been to our site, I highly encourage you to explore the Census Academy, where we have archived all of our presentations along with corresponding transcripts and PowerPoints. Let's begin. One of our objectives today is to present the different types of data that is available related to women-owned businesses. I will be providing a general overview of our programs that contain data related to women-owned businesses. I will also be providing statistics that come out of these programs and show visualizations connected with the data. And finally, knowing about the data is great. Access accessing the data, well, that is a question that we receive a lot from our data users. So I will be showing some primary ways to obtain the data that you need. Along the right side of the slide, you can find the location of our archived training materials. I've also included a section on our site where we have visualizations that have been created using our data. Some of our data users find that this is a great resource for their own reports and presentations. Let's take a look at the outline for today's session. We'll begin with some background information about the Census Bureau. For those who may be new, this will allow you to see the structure of our programs and how the data are disseminated. That way, you can know what to expect as you begin your data search. After that, we will dive into five of our programs that contain statistics on women-owned businesses. And finally, we will close out with how to access and obtain the data that you need. The Census Bureau is the federal government's largest statistical agency, and we collect over 130 surveys each year. Many of you probably know about our population count, the decennial, that is conducted every 10 years. Many people are less aware of all our other activities. Listed on this slide are some of our other undertakings. In addition to the 10 years population count, we have the American Community Survey, which collects and publishes demographic statistics annually 
I will briefly touch on this program towards the end. On the business side of the house, we have the economic census. The economic census takes place every five years in the years ending in two and seven. It is the business counterpart of the decennial. We also have statistics from the public sector of the economy from the census of governments. The census of governments is collected the same years as the economic census. So apparently it is a good illustration of relationships between our business or economic programs. We primarily conduct monthly, quarterly, and annual surveys. In looking at this pyramid, you should note that there is an inverse relationship between the timeliness and the detail of the data that we collect. That is, the most current data has the least amount of detail, while the less current data will contain more amount of detail. With that being said, the economic census is a periodic survey that takes place every five years. It is illustrated here at the bottom of the pyramid because it is the most comprehensive program when you're looking for business data. As you move up the pyramid to our annual programs, you will find that you can use these statistics for analyzing trends. And finally, at the very top of the pyramid from monthly and quarterly pro programs is where you can obtain t other timely data. To understand economic data census publishes, you need to be familiar with some key terms that we use. First is the North American Industry Classification System, also referred to as the NAICS. This is a system that we use to classify every business in the United States that is the primary dimension of business employment data that you'll see today. Each physical business location is assigned its own six-digit NAICS code based on the primary business activity at that location. Each individual business data are then turned into primary summary statistics that we publish by industry and geography. I've included a couple of slides in the reference section at the end for anyone who may not be familiar with our classification system. Next is the term establishment as opposed to company or firm. Most of our employment data is collected and published on an establishment level. Collecting the data this way allows us to provide the most accurate picture of business activity. For instance, if a company has both a manufacturing and retail locations in many states, separate data is captured for each location and not the company as a whole. If we didn't collect data this way, we would lose the accuracy and geographic and industry detail. This could be important to you as you may be using data from multiple surveys. So it's good to know what you're comparing when you're looking at the data. Third, we collect data from both employer and non-employer establishments. Some programs only cover employer businesses while others cover both. Employer businesses that have at least one paid employee while non-employer businesses are defined as having no paid employee. Finally, we are bound by Title 13 and 26 to uphold and protect privacy. As a result, we are able to provide high quality data because respondents are more likely to provide information knowing that their privacy will be protected. In looking for statistics on women-owned businesses, one of the primary sources is called the Survey of Business Owners. The Survey of Business Owners, commonly referred to as the SBO, contains both economic and demographic components. It covers over 20 industries and the statistics include business owners by gender, ethnicity, race, and veteran status for both employer and non-employer businesses. As you can see on this slide, the frequency of the survey is every five years. The most recently conducted SBO is from 2012. Going forward, the SBO has been folded into another survey that is conducted annually. I'll provide more information on this in upcoming slides. At the bottom of the slide, the first link leads you to our new data dissemination platform where you will find the SBO data along with all our other statistics from other programs. The second link leads you directly to the SBO homepage. Here's an infographic portraying data from the 2012 SBO. As you'll notice, there are approximately 27.6 million number of businesses with 9.9 .9 million owned by women. Out of these 9.9 .9 million, you'll see that the sector with the highest number of businesses fall into the category of other services except public administration category. 
And as you look further down, you'll see that each of the sectors vary when it comes to the number of female-owned businesses. This illustration shows only a fraction of the data type that you can get from the SVO. If you're interested in using this illustration or any of our other visualizations, we have a section on census.gov under library where you can obtain our visualizations and infographics. This slide shows a snapshot of data from the SVO showing that you can obtain some very specific type of information. Here I selected to look at the type of ownership, whether it's family owned or not family owned, by gender, race, and ethnicity. Also included are sales, receipt, and value of shipment information. The first column shows the number of all firms in healthcare and social assistance. This includes the number of firms with or without paid employees. In 2012, the data shows that more white females own healthcare and social assistance businesses than other types of females. Other dimensions available from the SBO not included here are the number of paid employees for the first pay period to include March 12th, annual payroll, and number of firms without paid employees. At this moment, I'm going to move along to another program called the Annual Survey of Entrepreneurs, also known as the ASE. We're not done with the SBO just yet. In a few slides, I'm going to show you similarities and differences between the two programs, along with the release of future data when it comes to both of these programs. The ASE is collected and released annually. Just like the SBO, you are able to obtain estimates on business owners by sex, ethnicity, race, and veteran status. The ASE is able to provide estimates on the number of firms, receipts, payroll, and employment for the nation, state, and district of Columbia, plus the 50 most populous metropolitan statistical areas. A unique feature of the ASE is that it has a module component where each year the set of questions within the module are updated. The module includes new questions on relevant topics occurring in the economy. For instance, one year the module may include questions on research and development, where the next year it could be a set of new questions on an entirely different topic. Similar to the SBO, the ASE is included in the folding of several surveys into one. Um, more to come on this, and the last ASE was conducted in 2016. I've included ways to access the data for ASE at the bottom of the slide. Here's an infographic using the ASE data. From the 2016 ASE, this illustration depicts the percentage change in number of firms from 2015 of businesses by race, gender, and veteran status. In 2016, we see that all firms reported approximately 1% gain with minority firms reporting the most growth of approximately 6%. And when you look at the comparison by gender, we see that female-owned firms reported approximately 3% gain. When you take a dive into the data from the ASE, you find that in 2016, women own approximately 20% of all employer businesses nationwide, and approximately one quarter of all women-owned employer firms were minority-owned. And when we break down this by race, more than half, approximately 53% of these minority women-owned firms were Asian-owned. And finally, we see a dip approximately 5% in the veteran-owned businesses. This is a simple illustration of the type of information that you can obtain from the ASC. So I wanted to provide an illustration of some types of information you can obtain from the ASC. This is a snapshot of one variable. In this illustration, keeping in track with our earlier example of the healthcare and social services sector, I wanted to show the class of customers by the types of ownership. Here we see that in 2016, both female and male owned it appears that individuals tend to represent more of the customer base for this sector, followed by state and local government, and then the federal government. And as I mentioned earlier, this is only a snapshot. I highly encourage you to check out the data from the ASE to find out more interesting statistics. So now that you've seen both the ASE and the SBO, you may be wondering, how they differ and which is best for your needs. 
This table provides some similarities and differences that could help you decide which is best for you. So going back to the pyramid that we saw earlier, the more timely our publication, the less details. Here we see that the ASE is published annually, therefore it covers the higher level of industry classification at the two-digit level. While the SVO is collected every five years, it's able to provide more details down to the six-digit level. Another big difference is the ASE covers employer businesses. This is defined as businesses that have one or more employees, while the SVO covers both employer and non-employer businesses. Our non-employer businesses are businesses that do not have employees. Example of these type of businesses could include hairstylists and daycare providers. So each of these programs have value depending on the type of information you're looking for and the level of granular granularity that you need. And finally, something I would like to mention is sample design. Um, although it may appear that both of these programs offer similar information because the sample, but the sample design are different. And that affects comparability of these two surveys. So in other words, when you're doing a trend analysis, it's not recommended that you use the SBO and fill in the gap years with the ASE data. So now that we've touched upon the SBO and the ASE, it's a good segue to our next program called the Annual Business Survey. The Annual Business Survey is commonly referred to as the ABS, is our brand new program that folds together three existing programs. The ABS combines the two programs we previously discussed, the SBO and the ASE, along with another one of our program called the Business Research and Development and Innovation Survey for Micro-Businesses. Just as the name suggests, it is a survey that is conducted on a yearly basis. The first release of the ABS is tentatively planned for spring of this year. At this moment, we do not have a specific date to provide. One good way to receive news on data releases is to stay connected and subscribe you'll be able to receive information on new and or upcoming data and data products as soon as they are available. Alternatively, you can also periodically check on the release of the data using the links provided here at the bottom of the slide. With the ABS, you'll be able to obtain similar statistics such as data on business owners by sex, race, ethnicity, and veteran status that you were able to obtain from the SBO and ASE. The ABS also includes the new module component that we saw earlier with the ASE. So the ABS replaces the SBO and ASE going forward. When you're looking for data on these business characteristics, the ABS will um, be your go-to source. Although the ABS replaces the SBO and ASE, there are merits to being aware of these two programs in case you may want to look at historical data. At the bottom, there are different ways you can access the ABS data. Um, we will go more into details of data.census.gov towards the end of the presentation. So while we're waiting for the initial release of the ABS, we do have estimates of data that are nicely depicted on this infographic. According to the estimates on this infographic, it appears that in 2017, there are approximately 1.1 million number of women-owned businesses in the United States. I also want to mention at the bottom right corner of the slide, you may have noticed an external logo. That's because the National Science Foundation is the sponsor for the ABS program. So up to now, we've been looking at different programs that can provide you data on women-owned businesses. When you have the data from our annual programs, it may be helpful for you to take a look at our most comprehensive source of business data in order to see a big picture as you may be comparing and contrasting different data dimensions. That's where the economic census come into play. The latest economic census is currently being released on a flow basis. It covers almost all the industry codes with the exclusion of agriculture. For statistics on agriculture sector, you would want to contact the Department of Agriculture. We have a full list of exclusions listed on our site. The link is provided here and will lead you directly to the page. The economic census is our most comprehensive source for business data because it contains many dimensions such as 
business size and franchise status with over 200 data variables. It is a survey that is conducted every five years in the years ending in two and seven. The survey includes employer businesses and non-employer businesses are typically not included in these statistics. We do have a separate program called Non-Employer Statistics that collect data from businesses that report no employees. You can access our Non-Employer Statistics right from our site, census.gov, or from our dissemination platform, data.census.gov, which we'll go into towards the end of this webinar. Along the right side of this slide, I've included a snapshot of the types of data that you can obtain from the 2017 Economic Census Geographic Area Statistics. Here you see the healthcare and social assistance sector. NICS 62 is available for the state of Colorado at the six digit level where you're able to obtain data specific to the type of healthcare services. This is only a snapshot. When you explore data, you'll find many of the variables and data you can filter and customize based on your needs. So while the data you see on this slide is from the recently released geographic area statistics, also sometimes commonly referred to as GAS, some of the data you may find may be from our first look. The first look is our national level release of the 2017 economic, um, economic census data that came out on September 19, 2019. So if you're looking at a particular geographic area and you see the national level, it is most likely that you are looking at the first look data and that the geographic area statistics for the geography that you're looking for has not yet been released. I'll go more into this in a few slides. Let's take a look at how you can use the data. This is a good illustration of primary uses of economic census statistics. Starting at the orange card, quadrant, um, this section illustrates that you can use our data to understand business competitiveness. When you move to the outer ring, you see examples of some specific uses. So I work in the outreach area for the economic side of the house. And we find that many of our data users use our data to grow their businesses by comparing what other businesses like theirs are doing. The data allows these business owners to make more informed decisions. The economic census data can provide information for investment planning and other types of local economic development. As we move clockwise, you'll see other uses of the data will depend on the research, your research needs. The green quadrant illustrates that you can use the economic census data to find information on business location and size in order to assess emergency management. And in tier, we see that the characteristics of businesses could help provide data on franchising. From our earlier SBO slide, we see that a large number of female-owned businesses are concentrated in the healthcare and social assistance sector. When you look at the data from the 2017 economic census, you can compare how women-owned businesses fare in comparison to the national or other geographic level data. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a snapshot of a search that I did with our recently released 2017 economic census. The first column shows that healthcare and social assistance sector is represented by NAICS 62. And as you drill down to the three-digit level, you can obtain more details in this case, code, NICS code 621 is a breakout for ambulatory healthcare services. In the red circle, you'll find some of the variables that you can obtain from this program. If you're looking for sales, value of shipments, or revenues, the economic census is a good source for you. And the variables shown here are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the economic census. Because we are releasing our statistics by geography, we have created this interactive visualization to help our data users. This infographic will allow you to easily find out exactly what has been released so you don't have to spend time looking for something if it has not been released yet. The map shows releases by, sector, uh, by state and sector. To begin, um, all you would have to do is select the sector from the menu to see which states have released data for that sector. The peach color indicates release of data for a particular geography. If the hexagon is not filled, this indicates that the data for the state has not been released. In some instances, you'll see that the hexagon is partially filled. This means that some of the data 
have been released for the state, but not all of it have been released. One of the neat features includes the ability to hover over the state and see a pop-up window that has the data for the state and sector. And finally, the donut chart at the bottom right displays the percentage of states released for the selected sector. This is available to you on our site, census.gov. There's also a link at the bottom here that leads you directly to this page. So what's new for the 2017 economic census? For our audience members familiar with our past economic census, we have new content that would be helpful to know. We have updates to the geographic areas. The updates include areas defined as new geographic areas as well as areas that have been dropped off due to annexations and various other reasons. We have provided ways for you to search and find out exactly what has been added and or removed so that you can know when you're comparing an area, you know that you're comparing apples to apples from one year to the next. We also have updates to the North American Industry Classification System. On census.gov, you'll notice that we have a section called Find a Code where you can look up specific NAICS codes. Here you'll have access to the 2017 NAICS manual along with previous editions as far back to as 1997. You'll also find many other helpful documents posted here. Another feature of the 2017 Economic Census is the North American Product Classification System, also commonly referred to as the NAPS. In the 2012 Economic Census, NAPS provide detailed breakouts of products made and sold and services provide, provided in a separate tables by sector. For the 2017 releases, the product lines are available by cross sector. You will be able to obtain product line data from the economic census by November of 2020. And for more detailed explanation, please visit our site and explore under economic census. In 2017, we also have a new disclosure rule that may or may not affect your data search. In one of our earlier slides, we had mentioned Title 13 and 26 to protect privacy of our data respondents. Our new disclosure rules mandate that we add another layer of extra security in, and in some instances, if you're looking at the lowest level um, of data, you will find that the data has been suppressed. For anyone who may be interested, the details is also listed on our site. And finally, another important new item is the dissemination of our data on our new platform accessible by visiting data.census.gov. So I like fun facts and various factoids. If you haven't already subscribed, I highly encourage it. This is an example of um, a fact that we put out on the professional scientific and technical services from the recently released 2017 Economic Census for the state of Colorado. So as I mentioned earlier, right now we are currently releasing the 2017 Economic Census on a flow basis. In September of 2019, we released our first look series where you are able to see the statistics on a national level. Right now we are currently releasing the geographic area statistics. The release schedule is available on this slide as well as on our website. I've included a link at the bottom that leads directly to the planned data product release schedule. Now I stress the word planned. Um, some of these releases could come out earlier than anticipated, so you may want to check the site and stay connected with us to find out the latest releases. we've covered our economic programs where you're able to obtain business data on women-owned businesses. It wouldn't be a complete picture if I did not include data from our demographic side of the house. As I briefly touched on, on in an earlier slide, the American Community Survey, also commonly referred to as the ACS, is our annual survey that counts our population and related housing characteristics. This slide is a nice, uh, shows a nice content overview of the type of information you can obtain from the ACS. As you can see, under population, we have statistics character, characterized by social, demographic, and economic categories. Since this is a survey collected from the general population as opposed to from businesses, 
you'll see that the economic category has variables that are unlike those that you are able to obtain from our business surveys. We do have housing statistics from the ACS, and if you're not familiar with the ACS, when you have a moment, I highly encourage you to check out the, what the ACS has to offer. And regarding geography, the ACS, like other programs, is able to provide statistics at the national, state, and local level. An added component is that the ACS can provide data um, all the way down to the census tracts and block levels. Now that you've seen data related to women-owned businesses, let's take a look at how to get the data you've seen today. One of our most user-friendly data tool is called the Census Business Builder, also referred to as the CBB. So there are several ways you can access this data tool. First, you can simply type in Census Business Builder into a search engine, search engine and open it that way. Or you can go to our site, census.gov, and access the tool from there. So when you reach the main page of the CDB, under the version number, you're given the choice of two different versions. The first is the small business edition, which presents data for a single type of business at a time. The other choice is the regional analyst edition, where the data for all the sectors are presented at the same time for areas you specify. What's great about the CDB is that it is a data tool that continually gets updated with new features. And if you see a feature that you would that you found that you find could be helpful to you as a data user, there is a feedback link where your suggestions are reviewed, and in many cases we ha we were able to um, implement. This is a screenshot of the small business edition. So as I mentioned earlier, the tool is user friendly. Here you'll see that there are two questions to answer. The first question is on the industry, and the second question is on the geography. This is a screenshot of the small business edition once you've answered the two questions and select go to map. Shown in the red circle, I selected home health care industry for the state of Colorado. You may have noticed that with the drop down menu, um, drop down arrows, the CBB allows you to change your industry, location, map variables, and other filters within the tool itself. Circled in orange, you can customize your geography within the tool as well. And in the green circle, you have the option to do various things such as download maps, change the reference layers, and so on. And along the bottom of the slide, we have the demographic information display. If you look in the bottom left, you'll see that there is a Create Report button. This is a feature that was available to you earlier, um, and we put the button here so you can access the report without having to back out of this screen. Let's take a look at a sample. Here's a snapshot um, of a part of a report. The illustration in the back shows the content of the report circled in red. The report is segmented into sections called My Potential Customers, where you'll find demographic data based on selections and filters you selected. You'll next see the business summary, where you'll find business data. And then there's a section on building permits and consumer spending. The illustration on the front on the right side of the slide is a snapshot of the business summary. Here we provided graphs for data points so you can easily see the information in an illustrated format. I highly encourage you to take a look at this data tool and explore it. There are many helpful features and the information you can obtain have been used in reports and business plans by our data users. What I mentioned today is only a fraction of this tool. On census.gov, we have many tutorials and videos on using the tool if you're interested in learning more. So here's one of our newest ways to search and access census data. It's called data.census.gov. It's our newer platform where you're able to obtain and search for census data with a similar feel to a standard search engine. When you access data.census.gov, you will see this main page. 
here you can see that we've inserted the PEX women as a search term. And the search results are available to you in various ways. You can see all the information available, or you can choose to see it in a table, map, or page format. On this example, we see the demographic variables for women available from the American Community Survey. And while you're looking at the data, if you have questions on specific data itself, you can always contact us. This page shows a partial list of search results of tables that have the variable women included. You'll notice that these two tables are only two out of 2,442 tables available related to the search term women. And of course, the tool allows you to select additional criteria and filters so that you would not have to look through all 2,000 plus tables to find what you need. And here are screenshots of results found under Maps and Pages. Similar to the search results for tables, these items are displayed either as a map or directs you to a page that has more information on your search. Before I wrap up this session, I want to provide this contact information page for the American Community Survey. We highly encourage you to sign up for alerts for all the topics you're interested in that way, when we have new data releases or news to share, you'll be the first to know. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your busy day today to attend today's webinar on women-owned businesses. If you have questions about programs you've seen today, please do not hesitate to contact us, and we will put you in contact with our subject matter experts so you can have your questions answered. My contact information is here as well. And if you have questions regarding the 2020 decennial census, please use the numbers provided here. Before we begin Q&A, please note that if you would like to schedule a training in your area, we have data dissemination specialists that would be able to assist. And um, at this time, operator, uh, do we have questions in the queue? I'm showing no questions at this time. And if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1. Please unmute your phone and record your name clearly when prompted. Once again, that is star 1 if you would like to ask a question. And our first question today is from Martha. Hello. Hi, Martha. Hi. I am wondering if this webinar and the other webinars you present are available later. It's saved somewhere that you can get at any time. I, I started this one late and missed most of it, I think. Yes. Hi, Martha. My name is Deb. Um, so yes, this, we are recording this webinar, and it'll take us probably about uh, five business days or so to post it, but it will be available in the Census Academy website um, under okay. uh, recorded webinars. And what we can do is, just for everyone's benefit, we can send that link to the, through the chat where the webinar will be posted. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Our next question is from Siti. It's Sydney, actually. Go ahead, your line is open. Hi, it's Sydney. Um, I was curious, I'm trying to determine um, the number of minority-owned and women-owned small businesses in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm wondering if there's a way to um, identify that using the tools that you've shared with us. Um, is there any direction you could offer on that? Sure, I can give you general information right now, and um, if you'd like to explore it on your own, and we can also um, touch base offline. So basically, you can use our tool. First um, and foremost, before we go into it, is that the Census Bureau does not define the definition of small businesses. Um, we do provide data that you can use 
to define what a small business is to, to you. Um, and you can, and the type of information that we do have that you can use to define would be based on um, revenues or based on employee, employees, the number of employees. Um, and there are other criteria that you could look into as well. Um, so basically, if you're looking for a specific area, you would use our data tool and you would go in and um, specify um, what specify um, the geography and then um, specify the, the variable that you are looking for, such as let's say you're choosing to define your small business as a business that has um, a certain number of employees, then you can specify that as a criteria. Um, if you'd like to um, contact me, I can walk you through, um, or we could talk over the phone some more if you'd like. I could show you exactly how to get that data. Yeah, that would be great. Is this, is this Linda I'm speaking with? This is Linda. Okay, great. I see your contact information here, so I'll send you an email now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from George. Yes, this is George Otterby. And my question, I have two of them. Uh, one is um, a contact, because um, I work very close with the Office of Minority and Women-Owned Businesses here in the state of Colorado. We're trying to develop a report, and I was hoping we could do a training session with the um, women and minority um, uh, um, chambers. But in addition to that, uh, I'd like to know how soon will the women and minority uh, data be out? Because I know 17 was the year they did the census. I was wondering how much longer do we have to wait for that data to be available? Um, sure. So um, based on your question, um, you're looking specifically for the variable um, women and um, minority owned, um, right? Uh, well, it would be the data itself when it will be coming out, and then how I can get contact with somebody to help do some training out here in Colorado with the um, minority and women owned um, chambers. Okay. Um, so, um, so I was just trying to make sure um, that I understood um, the question correctly. Okay. So based on um, um, what you said, the information that you're looking for is going to come from our um, annual business survey, and that is the survey that um, I had mentioned where it's supposed to come out in the spring of this year. We do not have a specific date as of this moment, um, and so if you're signed up with um, census, you'll get uh, information on when our data will be released. Um, so, and in regarding getting training, if you use the contact information here on this slide, the census data dissemination specialist for your area, you can call that number and um, get, have training provided in your area. Outstanding. I sure appreciate it because it shows Kim Davis and it shows Linda Lee. Uh, the Linda Lee has a 301 number. Uh, I don't see any other. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I stand corrected. I, I, I see another number here. Okay. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, uh, George. This is Kim Davis. If you uh, send an email to the census.askdata at census.gov, um, I will get that and, and respond to you for Colorado. Outstanding, Kim. I sure appreciate your help on this. Thank you. Our next question is from Jay Smith. Um, good morning. Thank you. Uh, I have a question in reference to some data that you were referring to micro businesses. I apologize. I was not looking at the webinar. I was just listening in. Can you tell me what report that was and how uh, Census is defining micro business? Sure. Actually, um, that is a survey that uh, was one. So the annual business survey has folded three different surveys, being the survey of business owners, the annual survey of entrepreneurs, and I believe you're referring to the business um, R&D for micro businesses. So that has now been folded into the ABS. I do not have um, in front of me um, how they define micro businesses. But what I can do is if you send me an email, I will forward your question over to the area that collects that data and let them provide the definition to you directly. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Thank you. Our next question is from Colby. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you for this um, training. So I have two questions. First is, is this um, is the data publicly available? That's number one. Then number two, by entrepreneurs, does it include um, 501C? Okay, so yes, the data is publicly available. And if, um, uh, so your question refers to entrepreneurs. Um, I do not have the specifics um, of that definition in front of me. Um, and uh, just with uh, the same as the previous caller, if you send me a message, I will go ahead and send your question off to that area and they can answer you directly. But it, the data is available publicly, and if you're referring to the ABS, um, that's going to be something that's coming out this spring. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And our next question is from David. Hi. Is this David, me, or is there another David? Hi, David. How are you? We can oh, hear you. Great. Oh, cool. Um, I sent a message to Kim, incidentally, that uh, I'm actually from the SBA, and uh, for the people who are looking for side standards for businesses, they can just do a Google search and put SBA table of size standards, and um, then you can get the definition of small business as well as micro businesses, because every, all the other agencies in the government pretty much use the SBA definitions because of the small business contracting and all those sorts of programs. So you can get the table of size standards, just do a Google search, SBA table of size standards. And incidentally, for the one asking about micro businesses, we at the SBA define that as one to nine employees. That's a micro business. But anyway, my question uh, was, uh, where do we do, where can we send feedback um, or ask about changes being, uh, that we could request for the census business builder, uh, specifically the regional analyst one? Sure. So when you're on our site, um, the Census Business Builder t within the tool itself, um, there is there is a send feedback link in the upper right hand corner. Okay. And so we just just include there what we want, and it'll go to the right person. Yes. It actually leads directly to the project um, manager, and um, okay. he's very responsive. And um, as I mentioned within the webinar, we have. We review the, um, the feedback, and we really do consider some of the items. If we are able within our power to implement it, we usually do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And our next question is from Thomas. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to know if you guys had a woman-owned business, business by Ward in D.C.? So um, by ward, I I would venture to guess no, but that's not a definitive answer. Um, okay. Um, send me. I, what I want to do is is I want to double check on that for you. But at this moment, I want to say no. But I want to double check um, within the system. So send me an email, and I will double check for you and send the information back. Okay, I'll do that. And this is Linda? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Alicia. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to know whether the presentation is going to be shared. Uh, yes. Hi. So the, the, the actual PowerPoint that you're using online, will you be making that available or just the recording? It will be the recording, the PowerPoint presentation, and a, tr a written transcript. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Our next question is from Victoria. Yes, hi. This is Victoria from the SBA. I was wondering whether the data that you've presented from the SBO and also from the ASE and now folding to the ABS, if there's going to be any comparability at the top line level. Um, so when you say comparability, do you mean like um, what I had mentioned earlier where um, if you, since the SBO is published every five years and then using the ASE 
to fill in the gap years? Is that what you mean? Like how? Well, when I mean comparability, so for example, if I wanted to look like for, let me say, the last five or seven years and said, okay, um, even though this is the AIBS, has said the total number of women-owned businesses, let me say it's like 2.5 million, and to say something like in 2005, that was an increase of X, Y, and Z. Is, that, is it going to be comparable on that level, or have the definitions changed? So what you um, – that's a – that's a good, so we do have uh, mathematical statisticians um, here at the Census Bureau, and um, that's a methodology question that is probably best handled by them. So send me an email and I will um, let them know that you have a question on that. Um, at this moment, I could provide an answer, but I do not want to provide a wrong answer. <laughs> okay, sure. And this is Linda that I'll be sending this to? Yes. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Rukaya. Yes. This is Rukaya uh, Zafra Kathleen. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Wonderful. My question I didn't hear anyone mention anything about nonprofits. Nonprofit businesses can utilize this information as well, can they not? Um, when you say utilize, do you mean use the data to decide what they'd like to do with their businesses in terms of decision making? Yes, especially when using that information to for uh, grant writing, uh, acquiring more funds to advance um, projects that are pan pandemic to eradicate um, this infection, this pandemic of trauma that's going on in our communities. Will we be able I to see. utilize the data? I see. Um, what specific type of data you're, are you, um, like variables are you looking for? Would be variables on the effect trauma is having from the youth. Okay, so um, so let me try to answer your question based on my understanding. I think you're asking me if nonprofit nonprofits can use the data. Certainly, nonprofits can use the data to assess the um, economic condition, and also at the same time, um, we um, we have um, on the Census Business Builder the data tool that was um, shown today. Um, many people have used the information that they have obtained from the CBB to write up and draft reports that even to secure a financial loan for um, because it does it does um, support many of the items that um, that you would need to uh, when you draw that type of uh, that type of document um, regarding um, the pandemic I'm not too sure what you mean by that if you're talking about uh, emergency management. Um, we do have a whole um, part on our section on our census.gov site on emergency management, and you can see how you can go there and explore and see how that might be what you're looking for. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to make sure that when pulling this data that it would be seen not as something to um, manipulate what you wanted, but actual facts of what is, because that's sure. what is. Sure, and I understand that completely, and that's part of our mission here as well at the Census Bureau, where we um, just provide facts and we do not provide any type of um, information where we've manipulated it to say a certain things. Um, yes. So um, completely you can trust that um, the data is sound. All right, wonderful. It, it actually helps with the nonprofit. We can't afford to bring in private anything. <laughs> You're starting, um, especially in, with the limited way we, in which we use the funds to make sure that we're getting it out, most of the money out into the community to help them rather than to the administrative costs. So this would be extremely helpful. So I appreciate that you have let me know that this data is just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. 
Right, and in fact, if you called and asked us, um, sometimes people do call and ask us to forecast, and we don't provide that type or our opinions on what we think the data means, or we don't do that just because we that's up to interpretation, and that's not our mission. Thank you. Our next question is from Kathleen. Hi. Um, so my question is: Is um, do the, does the data from these various um, programs change over time, or is it pretty much set for the next ten years? Oh, okay. So um, when you say data, do you mean do we have new data, or if, if the same variable is the same variable over time? Um, do you have new data that's being um, kind of integrated um, over yes. the course of the next, yeah, several years? Okay, so yes on that. So every time that we put out, so um, it takes a lot of planning, um, and we do incorporate what is happening within the economy. Um, so, for instance, I'll give you a good example for our classification system. So, um, back in the days where we did have beepers, um, we did um, put out a, a code for beepers where you can find information on beepers itself. Um, and now, since that's gone to the wayside, um, that the beeper information and data it's still collected, but it's um, but it's folded into a lot into a larger category. So we're very responsive in terms of what's going on in the economy. So um, so we do add questions uh, such as within that um, the American I mean the ABS annual business survey, the new one. That's that survey I mentioned that will include um, a new module each time, and and those type of questions are um, actually based on what what is occurring in the economy typically. I see. Okay. So yes, um, then the um, data that we see uh, today will be different, say, if we look at it um, in two years from now. Um, if you're talking about, let's say you're comparing apples to apples, of course, um, um, data vary, but if you're talking about including new data, um, that, that is also updated. For instance, I actually was taking a look at the annual business survey questionnaire that is also available to you online if you go in, on our site. Um, and I did notice that um, there were questions on, um, on the cloud, which um, probably didn't exist 10 years ago on a questionnaire. So yes, it is very responsive and there are new items included, and um, obsolete items are, of course, um, um, sometimes taken out. I see. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Sarah. Yes. Um, am I on? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I had a question about the move from um, American Fact Finder to the data.census.gov. Um, I was looking specifically for some um, census 20, uh, 2000 summary files, and they are available on American Fact Finder. That's being retired um, in about three weeks. Um, it's currently not on data.census.gov. Are there plans to get everything moved over in time? Um, great question. So um, from what I know, have found out is that um, What's going to be on data.census.gov um, migrated over from the AFF site. Um, I believe it's, um, depending on the survey, I believe tw 2000, it's either 2012 or, or 2007. I'm not sure which year at the top, off the top of my head right now, but there is a definitive cutoff date of when um, the items that are not being migrated over. And the historical data um, prior to the year um, is going to be on our FTP site. FTP site. Okay, thank yeah. you. I was just worried it was all going away completely. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Our next question is from Stephanie. Good afternoon, everyone. Please forgive me if I missed this, but I noticed in the conversation about the SBO data that it says 
the data is available every five years, but the data that you displayed was from 2012. Is there an updated version that we'll receive, or is, are they going to release additional information this year? Um, yes. Okay. So um, what happened there is that what you would typically um, obtain from the 2017 is now what you're going to be able to find on the um, annual business survey. Um, so in 20, so um, the annual business survey collects data. Uh, collect, well, it's going to be published for the first time this spring, and um, data collection occurred for the year 2017. So um, you're going to be able to find the information that you need um, and there's um, on the annual business survey instead. Okay, but the, the data that was on the screen was from 2012, so you do have 2017 that you can share with us as well? Not from the SBO, it's oh, going to be folded, so you'll be able to find it um, only from on the, the APS. APS, okay. All right, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. And as a reminder to ask a question, please press star 1. Please unmute your phone and record your name clearly when prompted. And our next question is from Vernada. Um, yes, good afternoon. Um, I run a tech-oriented business in the South Carolina Low Country, um, and I offer business consultations and web development services for uh, mostly women and minority-owned businesses and businesses of fewer by handicapped individuals. And I need to know whether or not your data is so aggregated that uh, whether or not I'm able to um, obtain information that would help me select uh, my, according to my ideal customer. Oh, okay. So if I'm understanding your question correctly, um, you are looking for specific um, names of businesses? Yes, yes. Will I have to um, go elsewhere in order to find that uh, finely granular information? And will your uh, data basically give me the general area for where to look? So um, unfortunately, we are unable to provide that information, and that is due to our um, Title 13 and 26 that we must abide by. So that um, law is just to protect our respondents so that we do not um, provide any type of personal identifiable information. So um, that so we can provide data at an aggregate level where you are would not be able to figure out. Um, so, for instance, if you were looking in one particular county and there was only one type of business like that, or t let's say two, and you actually are the other person who's the competitor, if we had published um, the data, then you would know um, what your competitor is um, doing or how much they're making. Or what, and other details, and that goes along the same line as um, publishing names or providing something like that. But you are able to obtain that type of information using um, private sources. Now, I cannot exactly um, endorse one company over the other, but you can certainly do a search engine and find the companies that are able to sell you lists like those. All right. I can thank you. Thank you. And, and operator, question. before you open up sure. the uh, line for the next caller, can you please give us a count how many questions we have in the queue? I just have, we have two. Great. Okay, we'll take those uh, okay. two questions and then we'll go ahead and conclude the session. Thank you. All right, our next question is from Patricia. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. Um, my question is, I was a little late joining the seminar. Do you have any information on the types of funding sources for these women-owned businesses? So um, I believe that at this moment um, um, the ASE may, but I'm not certain of that. Um, so I'm not an expert on the um, annual survey of entrepreneurs, but I believe that um, that the annual business survey may be able to provide that type of information. 
um, what I can do is um, do a specific search for you um, and see if there is something like that type of information. If you send me an email, um, and I will send it right back to you, the information. But I believe that the ASE may be able to provide that type of information for you. I'm just not 100% certain. Thank you. Thank you. And our next question is from Joan. Hi. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, excellent. I was going to ask if you gather this type of information for businesses located in Puerto Rico. I know it's quite difficult to get here, but since we are a territory of the United States, I wanted to check if we have that kind of data. Okay, so the economic census, um, we do have economic census of the island areas. Um, I believe that may be the only um, program that covers the island areas. I, do, I believe the other programs that we mentioned uh, today are, do not cover Puerto Rico. Can you repeat that one again, the one that covers Puerto Rico? It would be the economic census of the island areas. Economic census. Okay, I'm writing it down. <laughs> and I okay, can send. Thank uh, I can send the link uh, through the chat as well. Oh, excellent! Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, okay, so do we no have any other questions. questions in the queue? No, nope, no further questions in the queue. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, first of all, I would like to. Thank Linda Lee. Thank you so much for being with us today. The information that you presented um, is incredible. I, we've already had some feedback um, over the chat that you know we've uh, opened up a new world of data for a lot of young entrepreneurs out there. So thank you for the presentation today, and thank everyone for joining us over the phone and through the WebEx. Just as a reminder, we will be having the transcript, the PowerPoint slides, and the recording of the webinar posted on the Census Academy site in just about a week or so, maybe five business days, hopefully less. Um, but otherwise, make sure to check back and see when it might be available. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and conclude today's session. Thank you again. This does conclude today's conference. You may disconnect at this time.